Hey, welcome to my channel. I apologize in advance for my voice and the quality of this video and its editing. Um, I've never made a video before and I definitely have a voice fit for written content. Anyway though, onto the topic. Bitcoin, as well as crypto in general, though mostly just Bitcoin, has really been in the news a lot lately. It's taken a lot of people by surprise, going from like 10,000 to 35 to 40,000 in just a few months. There's been a lot of people talking about and giving predictions, but I guess I thought I'd throw my own hat in the ring, so to speak, and make my own predictions on what could happen from here. Though it definitely goes without saying, I definitely can't guarantee any of my guesses and I am in no way telling you what to invest in. Uh, do your own research and invest at your own risk, uh, otherwise enjoy the video. So what is Bitcoin? I'm not going to jump into a description of the technological aspects of Bitcoin, however I do want to discuss what it is from a value holding point of view so that I can better explain how I can extrapolate speculation from what's going on. Long story short, Bitcoin is an asset. Yeah, yeah, I know it's called a cryptocurrency, but ultimately I look at it from an asset point of view, especially right now. Assets come in many different forms, and in order to explain why I'm predicting the potential outcomes, understanding this definition has become intertwined. While my original idea was just to do a crypto prediction and not touch on broader topics, given topics such as inflation, economic performance, and the value of assets are so intertwined with the topic, I'm going to be running off on multiple different tangents in order for my speculation to have even a chance of sounding credible. So I guess bear with me here. So what is an asset? An asset, at least for the purposes of this video, is anything that holds value. This could uh, be physical assets such as gold bars, silver coins, land or real estate, vehicles, or any other item that you can hold in your hand and also sell for a calculatable price. Of course, some things like your open container or mayo might be hard to gain value back from, but most physical assets uh, have a value that is not directly tied to any particular currency and can be bought and sold on some sort of market that has a set price. Another form of asset, however, is what I will refer to as paper assets. That is, assets that you don't physically hold, but you can still buy or sell for a predictable price. This includes things like stocks, ETFs, and crypto. These assets hold a value that is not directly tied to any currency and are a store value that you can buy or sell for a calculatable price, but that also you don't generally exchange for goods and services. I know, I know, sometimes you can buy and sell things with Bitcoin, but oftentimes it's through a Coinbase style service which exchanges crypto for standard currency like USD and then hands over that standard currency to the seller. Even though it's not always the case and sometimes you can buy things and sell goods directly with Bitcoin, that's kind of the exception not the rule and there are options like gold money for gold where you can buy and sell things with gold but yet we wouldn't call gold a currency, it's usually considered an asset. So for my speculation here today, I'm really just going to keep ca calling Bitcoin an asset and not a currency. Back to Bitcoin though. Aside from the recent boost in price, it's been sitting around 10k more or less for a number of years now. That 10k price itself was actually a huge milestone when they hit there towards the end of 2017 and actually got close to nearly 20k. After th that time in 2017, I actually ended up selling off a small portion of my Bitcoin and more or less stopped speculating assuming that there was not going to be a lot of news for a while as Bitcoin either slowly died or matured as an asset. Trust me though, I bought exactly zero Lamborghinis, I wasn't quite that early. Well, here we are now in 2021. With everything going on, I believe Bitcoin is immaturely being either forced to mature or die in a much more expedited situation. Had 2020 not been, well, 2020, my guess would be that over the decade following 2017's bull run, Bitcoin would either maintain and or grow its value until being slowly accepted as a somewhat of a standard asset, if you can call Bitcoin standard, or had, it would either die out. But that's not the case right now. Now another tangent, inflation, economic performance, and assets. Inflation is pretty simple. There is so much stuff in the world and so much money in the world, so thanks to the freeish market, society collectively agrees that stuff is worth a certain amount of money. When inflation comes in, there's more money, but the same amount of stuff, driving the amount of money that you need to exchange for the same stuff to be even higher despite the fact that the stuff is no more valuable than it was before. Inflation is normal, and here's a graph of the inflation of the US dollar over the last hundred years. For reference, here's a comparison to Venezuela. That said, in certain times, inflation is more than usual, leading to a more notable effect. Secondly, there's economic performance. The economy is measured in the exchange of money for goods and services, which is what I keep referring to as stuff, and when the economy is doing poorly, there is less stuff, yet the same amount of money, so stuff costs more. Assets are an exception here, however, since their value is not tied to a particular currency. Even though inflation or economic hardship may slash a currency's ability to buy stuff, the cost of, say, gold is not affected here, since there is only so much gold and we all agree that it's worth something. Since these assets are not tied to a currency, even when a currency loses value, the asset can retain the value. Though it is worth noting that assets can also lose value just as independently as they can gain value. That said, oftentimes currencies are losing value 
or predicted to do so, and individuals start to buy assets for that purpose, driving up their value even more. So now we can actually get into some predictions, but actually not quite, because first, um, I wrote a book on digital anonymity. If you're interested in Bitcoin, you may also find that topic as well. And as a plus, you don't have to listen to my voice when reading. And besides, a couple universities seem to agree that anonymity slash pseudonymity might be useful in a certain situations. So there's also that. Uh, links are on screen and in the description if you're interested. Okay, back to predictions. Ultimately, it comes down whether Bitcoin will succeed or fail at being adopted as an asset. And I know everything is either a potato or not a potato. Quick tangent though here, asking whether everything is a potato or not a potato is actually a bit trickier than it sounds. For example, are french fries and potato chips potato or not potato? What about sweet potatoes? And if an Irishman eats nothing but potatoes, is he a potato? I mean, you are what you eat. Anyway, I have four possible outcomes that I'll predict with completely arbitrarily assigned percentages. One, let's just say 1% chance of happening is that society collapses and with no internet, Bitcoin no longer exists. Be an ec economic failure leading to a collapse or maybe the lizard people invade from the underside of flat earth. Whatever the case is, society is like Mad Max or Fallout without bombs and Bitcoin is worthless. Though actually, if society collapses and bombs are just lying around and they're scented, maybe it would be like straight up Fallout. Second chance, let's say 25%. We experience a lot of economic turmoil, and even though people are currently investing into Bitcoin right now as a hedge against bad things, they see the turmoil and have second thoughts about investing in this experimental asset and pull out of it. Bitcoin loses a lot of its value and its chance of becoming a more respected asset. Third prediction, let's say 25% chance again, is that we experience a lot of economic turmoil, but this time people continue to bet on Bitcoin and now it gains a lot of value both because there are more investors and because the loss of value in standard currencies thanks to inflation and poor economic performance. Though Bitcoin may lose some of its value that it gained as the economy gets better, just like other assets such as gold, it'll likely retain a lot of its value that it gained and it'll overall be considered a more mature and safe asset. Fourth, let's say 49% chance, is that the economy recovers here soon and Bitcoin stays as it is in the short term. Even though we may experience some inflation and a degree of a recession, there's no economy busting event and the worst is actually already behind us. While Bitcoin takes a while to mature, people remember that when they were worried the economy would collapse, everybody bought Bitcoin and it slowly becomes accepted as a mature and safe asset to buy. Even though it doesn't suddenly boost way up, it's a lot more stable and continues to slowly gain value for the considerable future. Beyond this, however, if Bitcoin survives, there's another set of predictions to make regarding regulation. Bitcoin is hard to control, so chances are it's either going to be mildly regulated, which would not kill it off, heavily regulated, which would be hard to enforce, but the threat itself would likely hurt its price, or banned, which would definitely hurt its price. A smaller country is not likely to kill off the market, but if a bunch of countries banned or really heavily regulated, then that good. I can pretty easily expect nations like China or Russia to make regulations or ban Bitcoin unless they believe it would drastically harm the economy or anger the population. Remember, governments are often slow, so if they act too late and a lot of people are already adopting it, it may cause people to be angry or the economy to be harmed. Nations like Japan have already banned privacy-centered crypto, such as Monero, and beyond that, there are a lot of nations which I'll have no idea what they'll end up doing. However, I would hazard a guess that a couple of European nations will likely take action against crypto, particularly ones which already have banned large possessions of cash, and I'm also guessing that nations like Australia and Canada are less likely to implement action against crypto. Here in the US, I would guess that things will remain somewhat as they are for the foreseeable future, with crypto being treated as an asset from a legal standpoint in regards to taxes, but as a currency in regards to exchanging as you must register as a currency exchange and follow the know your customer laws in order to buy and sell crypto. And you know, given hipsters are buying Starbucks with Bitcoin on one side and preppers are stashing Bitcoin for the apocalypse on the other, I doubt the public would be in support of heavy regulation or a ban. And you know, you just have to ask the British about what happens when you anger the American public. Well, I guess that summarizes everything. Uh, if you like content like this, I might be trying to be posting long form article style videos every so often instead of just writing things. I'm just doing this because I enjoy writing, but I'd love to still see this grow. Either way, thanks for watching. Also, here are two random memes if you're bored.